One of our Computex advertisers was CableMod, who are making a new vertical GPU mount that positions the video card farther back in the case, theoretically lowering the thermals. We wanted to test this claim properly, though, and it makes logical sense that a card positioned farther from the glass would operate cooler, but we wanted to test how that would work with air-cooled cards, which are typically limited by the gap between the glass and the cooler itself. By lengthening that gap by a couple of inches, performance should increase significantly, whereas typically you only want to use these stock vertical mounts with open-loop cooled cards, not with air-cooled cards. The cable mod mount should push the card closer to the motherboard, which has other interesting thermal characteristics that we'll get into today. Before that, this video is brought to you by Corsair's HS70 wireless gaming headset, which focuses on comfort with memory foam, adjustable ear cups, and a padded headband. The headset has a 40-foot low latency range over wireless, lasts for up to 16 hours of gaming use, and has extra focus on build quality to ensure it lasts a long time. Learn more at the link in the description below. So this is CableMod's new vertical GPU mount. We showed it in our ad pre-roll during Computex, and now that we're back, it's time to actually dig into it and see how it performs. And we had some thoughts that it would actually do as it promises, because ultimately you're talking about socketing this into the PCIe expansion slots and then pushing back the GPU several inches. And I think the difference is somewhere in the range of two to three or four inches, really depending on the case for testing. So for our testing, we're using a Cooler Master H500M. It does not represent 100% of cases on the market, of course, but it represents the majority of them because ultimately all these cases with vertical mounts, they basically push the card right up against the glass, which is fine for open loop, but not for air. And so this one pushes it closer to the motherboard. The question then becomes, what other limitations do you have? Well, one of them, of course, is that you can't use any of the really lower PCIe expansion slots for the most part, uh, unless you were to do something like what you've seen with the new Thermaltake and Cooler Master designs, where they're just taking a rotatable PCIe expansion cover to completely flip it. And either way, you potentially limit what other devices you can put in there, but most people only use one device in any PCIe slots anyway, and that's a graphics card. And if you're using more things, it's probably something like a, a stream capture card or something like that. So for most people, I think you're using one GPU. And our testing here should look through and, uh, and we'll find out exactly how much the difference is for a horizontal baseline test in a traditional configuration versus a stock case vertical mount up against the glass versus the Kale Mod kit. And this thing, I think, by the way, uh, is still in production. They're finalizing it now, so it'll be out in probably two months or something like that, maybe a bit more. So if you're interested in it, it'll be out on market eventually. They're just finalizing some production right now. Let's get into the thermal numbers for this. As noted, we're testing with the Cooler Master H500M for now. It uses the mesh front panel for this testing, so it, we've got more access to intake. We're not using the glass. We previously found that this case performed reasonably well in our thermal testing with the mesh on the front, up near the h 500 P mesh case, unsurprisingly. We're also swapping our standard GPU, so these results are not comparable to our other case testing results. We're using the case testing bench, but we've pulled the GPU out and we've replaced it with a 1080 Ti SC2 from EVGA, which has ICX sensors. So it's got, I think, nine total thermistors placed around the board. So uh, those give us some insights to power component temperatures, VRAM temperatures, stuff like that, not just GPU temperatures, but we do have GPU diode as well. Finally, testing is conducted with a 30 minute loop of Firestrike Extreme, which we found to produce a realistic heat load comparable to gaming, but also still a lot of heat, and it's strictly on the graphics cards. There's very little being done on the CPU. So it's a great test for that. And for this, we can just move straight into the results. I think we have one chart for this one. It's very simple. So here it is. Blue represents default horizontal mounting or baseline. Red represents cable mod solution. And orange represents the stock H500M vertical mounting. A quick glance shows that cable mod solution performs well overall and even matches the baseline horizontal mounting in some areas of the PCB. The GPU core is within margin of error between the cable mod vertical mount and the horizontal mount in the H500M but with that 44 degrees Celsius over ambient. The H500M vertical mount operates at 50 degrees, marking a noteworthy increase in temperature. 
The first two memory modules are also within margin of error for horizontal and the cable mod mount, and again disadvantaged with the stock vertical mount in the H500M. Cable mod has proven that it's possible to have a vertical GPU mount without suffocating air-cooled cards, at least in this one case, and this is particularly good news as some manufacturers are moving to build cases with this new vertical mounting format in mind, as you'll see in our Computex coverage of Thermal Takes Level 20 series and of Cooler Master's SL600M. We start seeing meaningful differences in the power component measurements. These are MOSFETs and inductors and are producing a greater delta as a result of their location on the PCB. Some of the warmer sensors are located toward the bottom of the PCB, below where the cooler MEM1, MEM2, and GPU thermistors are located. This coincides with a slightly higher delta that we see in MEM3, indicating that the power supply shroud is a potential inhibitor to cooling for the lower down components on the board. The VRM components are also located out of the most effective cone of cooling for the 200mm intake fans, furthering this. And the difference isn't massive, but Kale Mod still does a better job than the stock vertical mount. It's just that this is an interesting highlight of how the Airstream works in the case. The last point of consideration for this is clock speeds, because with NVIDIA cards, what will happen is every couple degrees that you gain or lose, there is a clock speed difference. There's a hard throttle at about 84 degrees, but below that, all the way down to below 60, there's still frequency to be gained from a couple degrees reduction in operating temperature. For these temperatures, because we had the EVGA fan fixed to 50% for both of the fans, we were operating at a low enough temperature overall that there was actually no meaningful change in frequency. For all the tests, it was about the same, roughly 1840 to 1850 megahertz, so no real difference. That would be exaggerated if you were to put in a card with lower fan speeds or perhaps use a case with even more restricted cooling, worse cooling on the front, something like that. You would start seeing greater thermal differences there that, well, the thermal difference would not increase at a rate linear to the frequency reduction. So you would see thermal differences up to a point at which throttling kicks in really hard. And then to see differences at that point, you'd have to look at the clocks, not at the temperatures. But for this testing, there was no meaningful difference in clock speed because we kept it cool enough to begin with. We did, however, measure a meaningful difference in thermals. So there's a real change there. So uh, pretty clear and straightforward for this. As for more extreme cases, of course, expect some throttling in some areas. But uh, basically, the kale mod mount, if you can make it work, if you really want it, I, I think it's going to be 60 bucks or so, something like that. So uh, depending on your needs, it's potentially a bit steep. If your case doesn't support a vertical mount at all, it helps. If it does support one, but you don't like it, you can put it in there anyway. But at the end of the day, thermally, it's about the same as horizontal mounting in the H500M. Your mileage will vary depending on case, but they should all be more or less the same. Uh, at least at a base level. And then the components lower down on the boards, yes, they'll run a couple degrees warmer than horizontal, but still cooler than traditional vertical in the case. So we had a lot of requests. People wanted us to validate uh, their claims, so we've done that, I think. It's really pretty simple, and that's it for this one. As always, store.cameraxnexus.net to help us out directly. You can grab one of our new shirts, like the Blueprint shirt that we just put up on the store. And that's, again, store.gamersnexus.net for one of those. Or you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Helps out directly. And as always, subscribe for more. We'll see you all next time.